been a week since Arthur Smith was hired for the most important job in our city, I think anyway. And I gotta tell you, I'm I'm starting to feel a little bit of warm and fuzzy. Took a while, but it's getting there. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer daily shots on the other two teams in town that I cover, the Penguins and the Pirates. I hope you'll check those out as well. Smith's hire got at least a nod out of me at the time that it happened. And for those of you who missed that episode, my stance, generally put, was that I loved the idea, the concept of laying a foundation for a running offense that can be passed along from team to team, from back to back, from O-line to O-line. That's where the Steelers have needed to be all along, even when the NFL went completely pass happy. And that's absolutely where they need to be now in the obvious primes of both Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. So the principle was in place, and I applauded that much and stopped there and left it with, you know, I'm going to do some more work. I'm going to dig in, do some research statistically, historically, anecdotally, find out what kind of a person this is, let alone what kind of a coach. What went wrong in Atlanta? How much does it matter that it went wrong for him as a head coach? And what I'm left with after all that is this. You like to have someone in your coordinator role who can peek out there. And that's peek as in P-E-A-K, not peek like peeking from behind a bush. I have no issue with that. Everybody wants to talk about coaching trees. Coaching tree, coaching tree, coaching tree. Mike Tomlin doesn't have a coaching tree. As if a coaching tree is an objective unto itself. I don't have a problem with not having a coaching tree. If you find yourself someone whose personality, whose skill set is more in tune with being a coordinator than a head coach, awesome. What's the crime in that? Ideally, that person is good at being a coordinator. But the moment that Dick LeBeau hit his figurative head on the coordinator ceiling and couldn't be a successful head coach in Cincinnati, it should have been obvious to everyone throughout the industry that being a head coach isn't for everyone. They are, coordinator and head coach, two very different jobs. Now, I understand why somebody would want to get promoted from coordinator to head coach because they are also two very different pay scales. But if Smith's greatest crime with the Falcons, and this is my understanding, was that he wasn't exactly an ace at roster building and roster melding, well, the positives to come out of that meaning his head coaching experience there, again, from what I was told, is that he was embraced there from a cultural-slash-discipline standpoint, and that he was respected as a human, meaning he was honest with his guys in one direction or the other. He shot straight with them. They loved that. They, the players, the Atlanta players, were not thrilled to see him go, as often is the case when someone gets fired. So he goes there, he gets three years at the gig, he learns his lessons. Maybe someday he'll apply those lessons and get another head coaching job somewhere. Maybe he won't. Maybe this job, this role is what he's meant to do. So when you hear him say things like he did in the Steelers.com interview with Missy Matthews earlier this week, that he feels like being around Mike Tomlin, being around the Steelers, being around their culture is a perfect fit for him. Sure, some of that can be from a PR perspective. Dude just signed himself a nice contract here, landed on his feet right after losing his job. That's got to be a nice feeling. 
but it didn't come across as insincere, and neither did any of his seven-plus-minute interview with the team. I sure wish that the Steelers would make him available for a general press conference, but that's not the way they do things, so it's not going to happen now, probably until you know OTAs or minicamp or the draft. Who knows? But that's all we have, and that alone made an impression on me, a positive impression. He didn't smile a whole heck of a lot in the interview, and he wasn't known for that in Atlanta either, but that doesn't mean he can't have fun, and doesn't mean he doesn't have fun with his players. It did strike me that he's a super serious sort. He's the kind of guy, I'm going to put this in my own language for you, he's the kind of guy that I could see walking around South Water Street. I could picture Arthur Smith walking across the fields, walking through the Steelers' locker room, through the cafeteria, as if he'd been there his whole life. He just kind of has that look-slash-demeanor about him. Now, add that up and throw in 10,000 other things, and they don't equal the importance of his performance, of course. But the more I studied about his background schematically, I saw someone who is not satisfied to just blindly pound the football because he's deluded and thinks that it's still 1974. I saw someone and heard him speak about this as well, who wants to exert the offense's physical will. Remember the stuff Andy Weidel was talking about last summer that had everybody so stoked? He wants the offense to punish people for the purpose of breaking the big ones. He wants to Derrick Henry you for the purpose of A.J. Browning you, to put it another way. So again, not that you want to have everything be about the coming season, but, you know, that is kind of what we just saw happen with this offense over the final four weeks of the 2024 season after Mason Rudolph took over at quarterback. That's a life that I can live That's an offense that I'm comfortable with, and by all appearances, and that's all they are right now, that's a coordinator I can get used to when we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Exciting news from Live Casino Pittsburgh's Poker Room. Join them this month for an $8,000 cash drawing on January 21st at noon. Don't miss the Westmoreland 300 Multi-Flight Poker Tournament starting January 23rd with a $25,000 guarantee prize pool. Seize your chance in the daily high-hand hustle promotion. The first 10 high hands went up to $200 with a second round from 6 to 10 p.m. More action, more winnings, only at Live Casino Pittsburgh's Poker Room. Visit livecasinopittsburgh.com for details. Also, be sure to follow Live Pittsburgh's Poker Room on X, at Live Poker WML, for promotion and tournament news. Today's J1Q comes from William, who asks, Why is Arthur Smith only talking about Kenny Pickett going forward when Mason Rudolph is clearly a more polished quarterback? You know, the interview that I referenced in the opening segment, the seven-minute session, the sit-down with Missy Matthews, Smith was asked twice about quarterbacks. The first time that Matthews asked him, her question was simply about the quarterback position. And Smith answered it from the perspective of the quarterbacks, I believe, that he has in the fold. He has, right now, contractually obligated to the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2024 He has Pickett and Mitch Trubisky because Mason Rudolph is about to become a free agent. So why the coordinator would say, well, let's include an assumption that this other guy is going to come back. 
He's not in a position to do that. Mike Tomlin is. Mike Tomlin is a decision maker involving the roster. He can say, well, listen, Mason has his choices and whatever. Uh, We want to continue doing business with him, I believe was the phrasing. Art Rooney can say that. His phrasing was, we want Mason back. But Art also acknowledged that it's not necessarily their call. If Mason doesn't want to come back, he doesn't have to come back. Heck, he can go ahead and get his commercial real estate license. He doesn't even have to play football. So for the offensive coordinator to speak as if Mason is coming back would be presumptive, I think, bordering on arrogant and probably a little bit uncomfortable. Now, the second time that the quarterbacks came up, Matthews's question was specifically about Pickett, and he addressed it that way. So I took your question because I've seen, heard, and read a lot of different people saying, oh, man, did you hear the Arthur Smith thing? It sure sounds like he's all in on Kenny. No, but one of the things that had to have come up, and Rooney suggested as much even before the hire was official, in the interview process with Smith was, hey, we have a first-round quarterback here. We would like to get the most possible value out of him, whether that means starting for us or a trade or whoever. I don't know. The Steelers, as an organization, have nothing to gain from devaluing assets. And right now, as you and I are speaking, Pickett's an asset. Pickett's not somebody that you want to just toss aside. You want this coordinator and whoever ends up becoming the quarterback's coach, passing game coordinator, however that ends up getting structured, you want them to understand that a big part of their responsibility is to make Kenny good. Make him a lot better than we just saw him. And I'll take this further. I'd bet, and I don't know this, obviously, but I'd bet that a big part of Smith's preparation for his interview in Pittsburgh was just studying Pickett because he'd know that that'd be the case. He'd know that the Steelers would want to protect their asset. But if anyone thinks that Smith was like doing some kind of analysis of the three people who played quarterback for Pittsburgh this past season and came away thinking, oh yeah, that's my guy. Come on. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 